This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers. Believing in the supernatural is not hard for many to do. The interest in and the sale of information about witchcraft and Satanism, the occult, and human ritual sacrificing along with other associated subjects of similar type all illustrate the enormous magnitude of belief in the supernatural. But interestingly enough, when it comes to belief in God answering the prayers of Christians in their times of need, many have their doubts about whether or not that is a realistic possibility. So why? Why do you think that is? Well, on today's program, we will explore this question and at the same time, explore how it might be possible to improve the results of our prayers. In times like these, we need the armor of God for the well-being of our families, to help you stand in the evil day. The Church of God International presents Armor of God, a program of biblical understanding. And now your host, Bill Watson. Well, hello, and again, welcome to another international edition of the Armor of God. It's good to be with all of you once again. You know, here at the outset, I'd like to just mention this, that in today's world, it's not very common to believe in the supernatural. Now, I get the fact that there are people that believe in demons and ghosts, haunted houses, witches, and warlocks. I, I get all of that. However, the conundrum enters into the equation when one brings up the word prayer, and specifically, answered prayer. Oh yes, my friends, when you bring up the idea of answered prayer, the fact that some kind of supernatural intervention is going to occur in one's life in response to your request, your appeal, your beseeching, your implorement upon uh, whatever it may be to request a response, well, that becomes a bit more difficult. And the conundrum is, and I get this point too, that there are people among us that do believe in answered prayer, but in all due respect, there are people that just do not believe in answered prayer. And it's those folks that I'm talking to today. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it is hard for people to come to grips with this idea that prayer can be answered? Well, there's probably a few reasons for that. But in all due respect, one of the major reasons is very simply, to concede the fact that prayer, answered prayer, is legitimate is to also concede the fact that there must be a higher power that exists, a God of some sort that is empowered and actually in control of one's life. And frankly, that's hard to embrace. That really is. It's much easier and I think you'd admit it, to just say, look, I'll handle it, whatever it may be. You know, it's an emergency, it's an accident, it's my health, whatever. Somebody's asking me to do something or I've got an obligation uh, to fulfill some part or request or need, want, whatever it may be. Guess what? You know what? I'll just let it happen. It'll play out and it will work out humanistically. But I have a question. Could it be that we're selling prayer short? That's right. What if answered prayer is real? And if it is, how could we improve our chances of being heard and answered? Well, before we get started in addressing some of those questions, let me interrupt myself, as we normally do, to present to you our free offers. That's right, we have two one-hour presentations uh, for your enhancement and enjoyment, as well as edification, titled The Requirements of Prayer. That's right, The Requirements of Prayer, Part 1 and Part 2. All you got to do is dial 888 
9191. Leave us your contact information or give the operator that uh, information and we will get that material out to you as soon as we can. We've also got that website there up on the screen at CGI.org. Don't forget you can order through that as well. And in addition, let me just share with you every Saturday our webcasting feature that we uh, also have at, uh, for your enjoyment and edification. Every Saturday, as mentioned, the times are always announced on our homepage. You can go and follow the link, the webcasting link, and you will see popping up in real time a speaker, maybe perhaps even from our home office there in Tyler, Texas, someone invited a special speaker or a minister of the Church of God International addressing some current event, world news issue, biblical uh, information, Christian living, ethics, whatever it may be that uh, may be on the minds of these speakers that we invite to go ahead and speak from our locations. So don't forget, every Saturday the webcasting uh, feature that we present, the times there will be announced on our uh, website for your consideration. In addition, don't forget that 888 number, 57 8891 for the free offers on today's program so that we uh, might be able to get that material out to you as soon as possible. So here we are talking about prayer and whether or not it's real. Is it legitimate? I mean, are we really just wasting our time and beating our words in, in air as we would go ahead and make these requests known? And if it is legitimate, if it is really true, and it does exist, answered prayer, well then, what is it that we can do? How can we improve our chances of being heard? Well, before we get started, I want to lay down this premise, because in going forward, without an agreement on this premise, well, the rest of the presentation probably won't mean a whole lot to you. So I'm going to ask you to give me this. Just give me this and, and if, for all intents and purposes, follow me through my rationale with this premise in mind. And that is the Bible, this Word of God, is the indisputable Word of God. We can't argue about it. This becomes the platform by which the rest of my presentation is going to be predicated from. And in that regard, I want to bring your attention over here to the book of Acts because I want to illustrate something that's very important for all of us to recognize that even the earliest apostles on the day of Pentecost recognized. They were having some issues, organizational issues, administrative issues. And in chapter 6, they realized that they needed help in administering physical needs to those growing congregations throughout the area. And so the disciples came... Uh, to the people, and they asked the people, why don't you look out among you and bring the individuals to us? We'll ordain them as deacons for all intents and purposes. But the reason why is interesting and what I want to bring your attention to. Here in verse 4, we read, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. That's important, my friends. The apostles recognized it too. They recognized that prayer is a very important exercise, an interesting exercise. As a matter of fact, prayer can be very cathartic. Oh yes, you can take time when you pray to really articulate, clarify one's mind. It clears the cobwebs out. Sometimes it even clears the viewpoint of whatever issues may be facing you in the needs that you might have or wants or desires for not only yourself but for others that might be involved in your life that you're concerned about in one way shape or form and are now trying to take the time to go ahead and express some concern and intervention in their lives for helping them and and that's an important aspect because it does indeed help you to, as I say, come to a better comprehension and clarity of mind oftentimes about the issues at hand. Now you add God into the equation, wow! I mean, you've added a dynamic now, a reality dynamic, that affords you real expectations. Expectations, my friends, that can truly ignite and infuse your life with interaction of a being in your life that actually does add a bit of reality, a reality that many people do not have and unfortunately do not share 
And you may say, yeah, 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 Bill, but, but wait, 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 wait. And I understand, I, I get it, I understand. You will probably say, you know what? They're just stories. Come on, from Genesis to Revelation, you know it as well as I do. These are just stories. And we've got to believe these stories. And you know what? You're not alone. The early followers of Jesus Christ, even before they were apostles, over here in chapter 20 of the book of John, the Gospel of John, let me bring your attention to the situation at hand. Jesus has been crucified and now resurrected. He's walking around alive. That's what your Bible says. Remember, the premise is this is the indisputable Word of God. Let me remind you of that. So bear with me here. And so, reading these words for what they are, we find ourselves contending with this particular reality that Thomas, known to many as Doubting Thomas, comes up with and is faced with to kind of, well, accept or not accept. And here in verse 26, we read and pick up the story. And I understand, like you said, that these are just stories. But look what Thomas, I mean, we're no different today than they were then. Notice verse 26. After eight days, his disciples were within, that is within a room, and Thomas with, with them. So the eight days later, because Thomas wasn't with them originally when Jesus appeared. This is the second time now. Eight days later, Thomas is within the room, and he's with the other disciples. And they then came Jesus and notice the doors being shut and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. And he said to Thomas, Reach here your finger. Behold my hands. Reach here your hand. Thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Wow, my friends. Did you get that? My Lord, my God, Thomas now is a believer. And Jesus says something to him as a result of this experience and brings it to Thomas's mind, calls him out, basically, using the circumstance as Jesus often does as a prop for a lesson to be learned for us who are involved in the circumstances, conditions, and situation. And he says to Thomas and the rest of them in the room, he says here, Thomas, because you have seen me, You've believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And notice this. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written. Why? That you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Notice one chapter over as we bring this portion of Jesus' ministry to a close because it wasn't very soon hereafter, it was very soon hereafter that is, that He ascended back to the Father. But prior to His ascension, He says, uh, John does this, He says, Then went, uh, or I'm sorry, verse 24, This is the disciple, John talking about Himself, which testifies of these things and wrote these things. And we know that His testimony is true. And there are also many, he says it again, just what we read in chapter 20, now he says it again in verse 25, there are also many other things with Jesus, which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, everyone I suppose that even the world itself could not admit or receive, that's what the Greek word means, contain, translated in the English in my uh, King James here, the books that should be written. So here you have it, my friends. Basically, what we're being told, it comes down to this. And this is one of the fundamental beliefs and items that we have to have going forward if we expect our prayers to be answered. And that is to just simply believe or don't. Believe it or don't believe it. Because belief, belief is the foundation to answered prayer. You see, it's very important that faith becomes a major ingredient in your relationship with your appeals because you are appealing to a higher power. The Father, the one who was introduced to us by Jesus Christ, is that higher power. And Jesus at His right side are responsible for hearing our prayers. And throughout the words of the Bible, we are told that when we pray, we can be confident and assured 
that they do indeed hear our prayers. Their ears are not deaf to our requests at all. However, with that being said, it becomes very important that faith is part of the mix with us to them if indeed we expect our prayers to be answered. Notice over here in Hebrews chapter 11. Let me go over here and bring your attention to Hebrews chapter 11 in this regard. And in verse 1, we read this. Now, faith is the substance or it's the confidence. It's the assurance of things hoped for. The evidence, this is the uh, certainty or the connection, uh, what you could say, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, elders obtained a good report. So it's by virtue of this belief, this faith in God that the elders of years ago and even of today are able to obtain a good report from God. Again, illustrating the fact of just how basic and fundamental it is to having successful prayers. It goes on here, by faith, Abel, verse 4, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Uh, verse 6, though, is key. Notice this. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And you go down through all of this by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark. He did that out of faith. He believed God. God talked to him, and certainly that was quite an advantage Noah had because uh, God did indeed visit and talk with Noah in many respects. But the bottom line here is he believed because there still was no rain, and in some scholarly writings it claims that it was over a hundred years before Noah finished that ark and finally completed it before the animals came and finally the rains as well. But we also have in verse 8, we understand that Abraham as well, when he, verse 8, was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, he went out not knowing where he went. And we go on here, through faith, Sarah herself received strength. But notice this, this is interesting, verse 13. We're going to put it up on the screen there for you. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off and, with, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So here we have a summary a summation of the fact that these individuals that we just mentioned, doing what they did in the conditions and circumstances of their life, did it under the belief and impression of what they understood to be the will of God, proceeded. And even yet today, we're told by virtue of the writing here of the, the one who wrote Hebrews, they still did not receive the promise. That's right, your Bible teaches, that's right, your Bible teaches that the dead are still in the grave, figuratively speaking, and I get the fact that people get eaten by fish or vaporized by bombs and, and uh, nuclear weapons as, the, as was done in Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and so forth, but my point is, figuratively speaking, they have yet to receive their reward, and your Bible is very clear on that. And again, if you don't believe me, let's continue here in this chapter. Verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, uh, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, uh, leaning upon the top of his staff. So many, many, uh, many, many individuals in your Bible who exercised a belief, exercised a faith in the promises or statements that they understood were from God and proceeded in that belief to do the will of God in their lives so that their prayers, their requests could be answered. 
By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention uh, uh, of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Moses, by faith, was born, uh, was hid three months by his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And by faith, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Notice this, drop down to 31. By faith Rahab the harlot, she uh, perished not uh, with them that believed not. Verse 32, what shall we say even the more? For the time would fail me, the writer goes on here in the book of Hebrews, to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of uh, uh, David and the prophets, Samuel, he goes on here, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to fight the armies of the aliens. He goes on here, women received their dead, raised to life. Even Jesus raised the dead, the uh, uh, shadows of Peter. Uh, the that is, the shadow of Peter healed the gentleman that he walked by. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And it goes on here, all these, all these, verse 39, having obtained a good report through faith, look at this, my friends, received not the promise. Second time, re-emphasize for the reason of illustrating the fact of how important faith is really is in the life of a believer of God, and in particular, a Christian believer. Notice verse 40 as we close this out. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us or apart from us should not be made yet complete, meaning that there's a time coming in the future when we're all going to be rewarded at the same time. And we understand in the Word of God later on as we extrapolate these truths that that time is at the second coming of Jesus Christ when the rest, that is those first fruits, will indeed be uh, resurrected. So we have all of these understandings about faith and how important faith really is. So let me bring your attention back though to John chapter 20 because I think it's important for us to revisit a nuance over here again in this chapter due to the fact of how important it is to have this belief. Remember, the premise that we're operating under, the very thing that I said at the beginning of this discussion as this presentation unfolded was what? That this is the indisputable Word of God. It's not questionable. It is from Genesis to Revelation inspired by multiple personalities divided up into 66 books over centuries. It was written supernaturally preserved so that we might be able to understand some of these deep, rich meanings of how to interact, how to connect up with, how to tether our connection to this being we understand to be and introduced to us by Jesus Christ as the Father. It's so very important, my friends, that we grasp this understanding. But let me take you back here to John chapter 20. And in this case, let me take you down here to verse 24, just if for no other reason, to reemphasize this point that we had addressed earlier in the presentation. Notice again, this is the first encounter where Jesus appears, doors being shut, Thomas not present. Here in verse 24, we're told, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. How many of us are of that attitude? How many of us just refuse insistently that unless we can digest it through our five senses and in some way prove that God does indeed exist in our reality, are we like Him? Well, as 
we understand Jesus here in verse 29. I'm going to reread this scripture because I think it's very important we get this point. Thomas, Jesus said, because you've seen me, you believe. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. How can you see God but not really see Him? so that you can believe. Well, my friends, answered prayer is a miraculous event. Oh yes, that's right. Answered prayer is very reciprocal. Upon one's involvement in prayer and reaching out to God the Father, asking for His involvement in your life, in your circumstances, and then when that answer comes and your prayer, your request is indeed answered, guess what that does? That provides proof. That gives you evidence because you're communicating. Oh yes, you're communicating and the communique is actually now generating results in your life that are manifesting in reality, your dimension, in your circumstances. And consequently, what does that do for you? Well, it should reciprocate in the reinforcement of more faith. Of course, that's what it does. And it brings the actual spiritual sighting through the involvement of your spiritual interaction and then affords you, my friends, a reality that goes beyond description. It goes beyond how we as human beings can comprehend a closeness with God. Very hard to describe once one recognizes God is indeed involved in one's life. Oh, there's so much that can be said on this topic, and I'm just getting started, and that's why you really have to get these free offers that we're providing you, because there are some nuances to what I'm talking about that you need to be made aware of. So dial now, 888 578 and ask for those free offer uh, offers, actually, that we're uh, presenting today on the program called The Requirements of Prayer. That's right, The Requirements of Prayer, because this is not as simple simple as answered prayer may be, because guess what? <laughs> the nuance is your prayers may not always be answered according to your request, and that adds a whole different question in one's mind. That's why you need to get this free offer at 888-578-8791 or hit us on that website at www.cgi.org. My friends, prayer is something that is very important for all of us to be able to have. A good, healthy prayer life with God is truly sauce to the bones. It's oil to the joints. It is the empowerment in one's walk with Christ that will give you the confidence to be able to face the daily duties that oftentimes face us and contend with us that are so very challenging. My friends, develop that prayer life. This is Bill Watson again reminding all of you, you keep on that armor of God so that you may be able to stand in this evil day. Armor of God and the free material offered is brought to you by the Church of God International of Tyler, Texas. You may write to us at 3900 Thames Street, Tyler, Texas 75701 or call toll free at 1-888-578-8791 or call one 939 2929 during regular business hours. You may visit our website at www.cgi.org or email us at armorofgodcgi.org. We appreciate your prayers and support. This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers.